podcast, the Neil Haley Show, and the Dr. Christopher Hall Show. I'm excited to welcome to the program Dr. Christopher Hall. Dr. Hall, thanks for you for your service. I know you're excited about our guest today. You know what? Wow, I'm very excited. You know, we are a very exciting veteran actor, a uh, person who we've seen, you know, in, in, in movies like the, the Natural, and Dexter, you know, Lost. Wow, I'm, I'm very excited to welcome you know, Mark Pellegrino to the show. Good morning, Mark. Hey, man, how are you? Hey, it's it's morning, right? You're in Looks California, good. right, Mark? I I am in Los Angeles, California, so it is really early in the morning, 6 a.m. out here. Yeah, so we'll try to wake you up for the first of the tour by the end of the tour. I wish I would have got you at the end, but go ahead, Chris, with your first question. Oh, well, um, no, no problem at all. No problem at all, you know. So, Mark, um, you know, uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, there's the you character in uh, Virgil Poe, American Royce. Uh, tell us a little bit about that character. Yeah, he's sort of the the village Lothario of Buell, um, married to uh, to Grace Poe, but um, pretty much in every other woman's bed except Grace's, and uh, and he's an absentee father, and that's pretty much what you see through season season one um, with with Virgil. But I think in season two you're going to see a guy that tries to help his son out of terrible circumstances because we leave. We leave Billy at the end of season one in a coma. We don't know if he's going to pull out of it or recover. And through his therapy process, he's, you see he's got more than just his body damage. His mind is, is completely dis- destroyed by PTSD. And Virgil has a choice to step up, you know, be, become the father he never was, become the adult he never was, or, you know, turn his back uh, on everybody like he did in season one. Mark, you know, it's hard to play somebody that's going through PTSD. It's such a... Uh, I have a client of mine that's went through it and he's talking about it personally. It's, it's very hard. And so many people are suffering from it. Oh, it's terrible. I, I know from personal experience, I was actually diagnosed with PTSD. So I get it. It's uh, it's oh, a, man. A, but yeah, I mean, it's, hmm. it's something that requires intensive therapy to be able to cope with the, the terrible anxiety, the residual anxiety that you have from trauma and, and then to, get around it and be able to live despite it it's it's a long process to get through all right good Definitely. good chris next question well i was just answering he says that you know being a doctor i've started to see that and mark's totally right but uh well mark you know what how excited are you to be in the, the uh, beverly hill cops beverly hill cops oh my god i'm so excited i mean i grew up with eddie murphy he's the, he's a superstar he's been a superstar for 40 years and I feel like I'm a I'm, I feel like I'm a part of a movie now that is um, a throwback to the original version. All the all the guys are there, all the actors are there from the original version, and 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 a few more interesting folks are added to the cast. I think it's going to be a really bang up experience. You know, and that's the thing, Mark. When right. you, you, a, a movie that's been pushed and pushed and excited, right? You've been they've been promoting it for a while, you know, even re-releasing Beverly Hills Cop on, on Netflix and stuff. It's got to just feel great that finally it's going to come out. Yeah, it does. You know, we had so many, so many issues with COVID and then uh, the same with American Rest. We had COVID issues that broke up our production and then we had the strike that went on for almost a year. And, and so I've been chomping into bit for people to see this film. I think they're really going to be pleased. Oh, it's great to have content. All I have to say, hey, you got double content for me, Mark. Thank you. I'll be watching because they both <laughs> seem very interesting. I have some stuff to watch this Easter weekend. All right, go ahead with your next question, Chris. That's, that's exciting. Oh, no, you know, Mark, Mark's a veteran actor. He's been in Hollywood for a long time. And um, and so I know if you work with lots of big stars, big stars have stuff. But you now working with Eddie Murphy, what's that like? Is he really funny on set or is that just kind of a stand-up thing? You know, I mean, I've worked with two great comedians. I've worked with Jim Carrey and Eddie Murphy, both iconic guys, and both of them are extremely serious when they're working. Um, they, I mean, Eddie will sit there quietly and discuss the entire scene with the director, thinking through it. You could see him thinking through it. If something doesn't make logical sense to him, he questions it because it all has to make logical sense to him. And after they work that out for a while, and he's got it in his, he's got it in his mind what what the scene is about, what he's going to do. Axel Foley comes out like an entirely different personality. So I was, I was amazed that both, both guys are just super quiet, super serious, super focused. And then when the camera's on, there's somebody entirely different. 
Isn't that interesting about comedians? I think Howie Mandel is the same way as well, Mark. I've interviewed him multiple times, and he's a different person on camera than he's off. And I think it's because it's such a difficult job being a comedian and trying to make people laugh all the time. You know, uh, did you ever see the movie Punchline with Tom Hanks and Sally Field? No, I have not. I've not seen that movie. I'll have to see it. She plays a comedian that's trying to break into the business, and she's talking to ha Tom Hanks. He's already broken into the business. I think he's a big star in it. And he's like, you don't understand. The secret to being funny is to think that nothing is funny. And you, it, it, it sounds really dark, and I don't mean it as darkly as it sounds, but it's like comedians are super serious. You know, they're actually really okay. smart, super serious people. Yeah. And that relates into the acting, you know, that they do later, and that's why I think their acting is so profound. I mean... I haven't met a comedian yet that whose acting I didn't really like. Billy Crystal, you can see him in serious stuff. Jim Carrey, serious stuff. Um, Eddie Murphy, serious stuff. They've got a lot of depth, man. That's where that comedy comes from. Mark, when are you going to write your biography with all these different people you've worked with in your career as an actor? <laughs> I know I should. I, I mean, I... Every time I work with a great person like these guys, I sit with them as as much as I can. I talk with them about the craft, and I really should I really should write a biography about that because I mean I've learned so much from everybody I've worked with. But you're a rock star yourself, Mark. Come on now, with all the different projects and the major right. shows you've been on. So go. So you got to write your you got to write your autobiography. I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna push you to do that. Okay. We'll stay in touch for sure. Okay. Thank. All thank right. you. All right, Chris go, Chris, go ahead and summarize Mark Pellegrino real quick. Uh, no problem. I mean, there you go. Like you said, a true rock star who represents Hollywood, who represents our ideals here in America, you know, with the American political party, his actions and movies. He's been around. So, wow, we're so excited he came on our show today, and we're looking so excited to the Beverly Hills Cops. So thanks for coming out, Mark. We really appreciate it. All right, Mark, we appreciate it. Okay, uh, you're, you're, you're listening and watching the special simulcast of the Neil Haley Show and the Dr. Christopher Hall Show, guys. Take care.